Thank you all so much for coming here today. It, it is incredibly important. Um, I have worked as a naturalist now for about 16 years, but I guess I grew up in a generation before the environment even existed. Um, thankfully now, that is starting to change. We're living in, in an era where people are becoming more and more aware about environmental issues, and that's essential. To put it into a little bit of context, about 65 million years ago, a meteorite crashed into our planet in a place called Chicxulub, the uh, Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. It was about a kilometer across, and the devastation that followed it surrounded our planet in clouds and dust for many years, blotted out the sun, and caused a whole range of extinctions across our planet. Um, it decimated the wildlife that was living here, and as many of you all know, um, destroyed the dinosaurs. We're going through an extinction event now that is greater in intensity and speed than that that was caused by that meteorite 65 million years ago. And it's all down to us as human beings. Our effect on this planet is absolutely decimating the world I've come to love working in, in my job for the last 15, 16 years. A WWF uh, report that came out last year showed that in the last 40 years, we've lost around 50% of the wildlife from this planet. Around 50% of the populations of animals on this planet have disappeared thanks to us. Uh, those are all numbers, but I get to see it in a really tangible sense doing what I do. Last year I was in the Arctic through the summer, I was in the Antarctic in the early part of the year, and those are places where you can, you can see and feel climate change. It starts to become, become something that's actually real. I was living with Inuit people up in the Arctic. They've been in the same place for around 3,000 years, and yet they're starting to get the arrival of, of insects and fish that they have no native names for, that they've never seen in their history. There are valleys that have had glaciers in them for thousands of years that now are completely dry. The ice is, is, is melting and breaking up earlier in the season than it ever has before and reforming later. Polar bears are wandering around their lands, starving in search of food. In the jungles of Borneo, a place where in the 90s I went traveling for, for, for many, many months, and I can remember flying over Borneo for hours in a plane, and all you would see below you would be rainforest. And now, if you go back, you can repeat that same flight, and all you will see is oil palm plantation. But what's the problem? It's green, it's, it's plants, right? But if you go into the rainforest around about six o'clock at night, the sound is deafening. There is a cacophony of calls from, from cicadas and frogs and birds. And you go into the oil palm plantation, and it's silent. There is absolutely nothing living there. I get to see, day in, day out, the things that we're doing to our planet. And the people that are going to change it are exactly the same people that the Young People's Trust for the Environment is talking to. It's young people. The job that we have to do is to show them how wonderful our world is, is to make them love our planet, because the very people that love things are the same people that are going to want to protect them. That's what the Young People's Trust for the Environment has the potential to do. That's why I support it, and that's why I guess I'm here today. Thank you all so much for coming. Oh. Thank you very much, Steve.